Good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor, and we begin tonight with gaslighting. I know you hear that a lot. Oh, don't be gaslighting me. Stop gaslighting them. Oh, they're just gaslighting us. What does it mean? Uh, it's not a synonym for lying. It's a very specific kind of lying. The origins are from a film, Gaslight. It's in black and white, but you'll enjoy it, kids. Trust me. Ingrid Bergman's in it. She's really pretty. And what happens is Ingrid Bergman thinks she's going crazy. She looks outside her window. This is back when they had gas lamps in the uh, streets there before electricity. And she always thought the gas lamps were, were, were dimming and dimming and dimming. And her husband was like, what are you talking about, honey? The gas lights are fine. The gas lights are fine. The gas lights are fine. Turns out the husband was purposely dimming all the gas lights because he was evil and he was trying to drive her nuts. You see, that's gaslighting. It's not just lying. It's knowing that you're lying. And knowing you're lying just to screw with other people. That brings us to Jake Tapper at CNN. Watch. I have to say I'm surprised that there hasn't been a national conversation about the damage done to kids because of these school closures and the virtual learning and everything. Because, I mean, I'm not saying it's, there should be a national do-over, but we can't just pretend that fifth graders who are now seventh graders, that that didn't happen. You know, like I feel like there should be and not not with a blame game. Look, it happened. People did it. It was criticized. The school closures, the virtual learning, et cetera. But here we are. Um, there needs to be yeah, like, a, I mean, like a bipartisan movement, you know? Yeah, bipartisan. Uh, there's a movement happening right now, I assure you. The election's coming two weeks from tomorrow, and I don't think it's going to necessarily be bipartisan, Jake. That, my friends, is gaslighting. I'm surprised there hasn't been a national conversation about these school closures. There has been a national conversation about school closures. You haven't been paying attention, Jake. You haven't been listening. Well, you're at CNN, after all. You're having a very different conversation over there than we are here in the rest of the real America. The conversation's been happening with our, our spouses, our husbands, our wives, with our brothers, our sisters with our aunts and our uncles, with our children. We tried to have the conversations with our teachers, but they weren't allowed to have the conversation because the teachers union thugs won't let them. God knows we tried to have that national conversation with our elected representatives at the school board level, but then we got called domestic terrorists and the FBI was sent after us. Oh, this national conversation's been going on, Jake. Actually, I correct it. It's not that you weren't paying attention. You were there. We remember, you were part of this national conversation. The problem is, Jake, you were on the wrong side of it. Remember what you said, July of 2020? You said it on Twitter, here, look. As Trump demanded schools reopen, his experts warned of highest risk. That's the New York Times, that's July of 2020. That was when we were having a national conversation, trying to get our kids back into school that fall. You see, because the teachers union and the Democrats and the CDC and a lot of governors and you, Jake, you, Jake, and the rest of your colleagues in the media, you were having none of it. If we said, hey, we've got the science now. We've learned that our children, thank God, are not susceptible to this virus. They're not getting sent to the hospital if they get it. They're certainly not dying. Thank God. It's not like the flu where children do sadly die if they're susceptible to the virus. No, the one good thing coming out of COVID-19 is that we can get our kids back in school. That's the national conversation we're having at that moment, Jake, and you were on the wrong side of it. Why? Why? Here we were, it was summer, we were moving into the fall, we were trying to get back to some sense of normalcy in this country. Let's get our kids back to school so they don't have to suffer. What else was going on that fall? Fall of 2020, I know there was something. Oh yeah, a presidential election. And you know, if your kids could go back into school, then maybe you wouldn't be so angry. Maybe you wouldn't have that sense of our country is falling apart. Maybe there would have been a lot of suburban voters that would have said, you know what, it was bad, the COVID lockdowns were, were, were awful, but now the kids are back in school. And let's face it, Trump's done some pretty good things. Let's just stick with Trump. Nope, our kids were used as pawns, blackmail, so that an election could be won. Oh, but it's not just Jake. We're going to stick with CNN, but let's look at a senator, Patty Murray. What would she have to say? Was it a mistake to keep children home for school so long during the pandemic? Dana, this was a decision of local school officials and our scientific experts. 
trying to get their hands around a pandemic that was killing millions of Americans to protect their children, to protect their staff, to protect their communities. I am proud that when Democrats got control a year and a half ago, uh, Democrats voted for the American Rescue Plan that helped our kids get back into school safely, making sure that our From schools... From Senator Patty tested. Murray in Washington, please, I'm proud we spent this money to get back. Hey, let me ask you something. Is your kid's school better ventilated now than it was two years ago? You know, a lot of school districts took that money for ventilation and gave bonuses to the teachers union because they had it so tough during the lockdown. She's gaslighting you. Oh, we were working with the science we had. Guess who else had that science, Patty Murray? You had Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida. You had, you had the governor of Tennessee. You had the governor, uh, Greg Abbott, in Texas. You had a lot of Republican governors who saw the exact same science. And they said, you know what? Let's not make our kids suffer anymore. Let's actually, we'll take the hit. Sure, you need us to wear masks on airplanes. OK, fine. You need us to wear masks when we go to court. You need us to shut down our businesses and continue conducting it via Zoom call. Fine, but let's not have our children suffer. At the very least, let's get them back into classroom. Because let's face it, learning geometry from a laptop on your kitchen table ain't so great. And maybe a couple years from now, we're gonna see some test scores that show that our kids have suffered through all of this and they're way behind. Because guess what? This week, that's exactly what happened. Nationally, test scores are down across the board. Remember the teachers union? Randy Weingarten, she's the president of the American Federation of Teachers, and, and everything she does is for the children, right? Uh, let's not forget what she was saying at the time. Yeah, there you go. We can't let our kids get back. It's unsafe for the teachers. You're going to kill grandma. You're going to kill Mrs. Smith, your third grade teacher. And now, of course, we're pretty angry about it when we see how our children have suffered. And so, of course, now here's what Randy Weingarten has to say. Oh, yeah, don't look at me. Nothing to see over here. I had nothing to do with it. Gaslighting, 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 gaslighting. That's gaslighting. They know that they were wrong. They know that they continue to be wrong. And now they're pretending. It's like, geez, how did this happen? Wait, two years from now, we're going to have Jake Tapper saying, you know, I'm surprised we're not having a national conversation about all the terrible things going on at the border. In fact, let's go back to Jake one more time, because he said something really salient right at the beginning here. Let's not forget. Here's Jake Tapper. I have to say, I'm surprised that there hasn't been a national conversation about the damage done to kids because of these school closures and the virtual learning and everything. Because, I mean, I'm not saying it, there should be a national do-over, but we can't just pretend that fifth graders who are now seventh graders, yeah. that that didn't happen. That's good. I'm not saying there should be a national do-over. First of all, I don't know what that means unless Jake has a time machine that I'm, aware, I'm not aware of. But there is going to be a national do-over, Jake. It's happening 15 days from today. There will, in fact, be a national do-over. All of us who are tired of getting lied to, who have been through all of this, and know who exactly is responsible for what our children have been through and what we've been through, we're going to instigate a national do-over. And it's called a brand new majority in the House, in the Senate, and ah, you might see some new governor's faces as well.